Hey everyone, Dark Skeleton here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a character for Vampire the Masquerade. Now, Vampire the Masquerade is a part of World of Darkness, and obviously the game itself is about playing and role-playing uh, vampire characters. Generally, you start out as what's known as a neonate, which is effectively a very new vampire who hasn't been around for too long, isn't one of the older, more powerful generations and you meander your way through vampire society and the way that you'd like to play, whether that's climbing the ranks of the Camarilla, uh, being kind of a vicious dog like the Sabbat, or going completely independent altogether. Now, uh, as a pen and paper game, you need to make your character. Uh, generally, to do that, you would print out a character sheet, although nowadays you can simply make the characters on the computer, uh, like we're going to do here for the sake of screencast simplicity. And uh, there's a few steps to do it, but actually it's one of the simplest characters of any pen and paper game, uh, RPG that you can possibly make. It's a lot quicker than uh, Shadowrun, for sure, that's for sure. Um, anyway, so the first thing that you really have to do is pick your nature, demeanor, concept, and clan. Uh, your clan is effectively the kind of race of vampire you are. Um, it's very much based on the vampire who sired you, which, of course, is the vampire who decided to actually make you a vampire. In a way, it's kind of like your father or mother, but it's a very different relationship inside of the game. But without getting into that too much, there's a bunch of different clans you can choose from. If you have the core rulebook or you look online, you can look them up. And it does determine a little bit about uh, how your character actually plays out in game. Uh, a lot to do with roleplay, of course, since different vampire clans tend to act differently. Um, but also, especially when it comes down to disciplines, which are your vampiric powers, different clans have different powers. So, for instance, if you wanted to have Thaumaturgy, which is the blood magic of vampire, you'd probably want to be playing the Tremere. So, we'll go ahead and put that in as our clan, uh, one of the ones I actually like to play in the PC games. Uh, the concept for your character, um, pretty much self-explanatory, but your character is going to maybe loosely be based on some kind of stereotype. It doesn't have to be, um, but if you want to do a baseline for your character, would he be a farm worker? Would he be a politician? Would he be a mechanic or maybe a computer whiz? Uh, what kind of character are you trying to make here? Um, these three boxes aren't necessarily going to have direct impact on the gameplay, but should kind of give you an idea of who your character is. So uh, we'll go ahead and do a politician. I mean, why not? Not the kind of character I would normally play. Let me see, did I even spell that right? Politician. Yes, I believe so. <laughs> Laugh at me a bit if, you're, if I'm wrong there, because, yeah, I think I should know that after college. Uh, demeanor. Um, demeanor is how you actually present your character to the world. It's how others in general are going to see you, especially in public. Uh, what image are you projecting onto the world? So a politician is probably confident and kind of has an alpha personality. Um, doesn't really take crap from other people because he's at the top of the pyramid, or at least he'd like to think so. In this game, probably the top of the human pyramid, but when it comes to vampires, a neonate, nah, not so much. Now, as a nature, this is more his true self, who he is under the surface. This might be the kind of thing where only his lover or closest friends would uh, actually get to really experience as a nature, or uh, other very perceptive people might actually pick up on it. So, a politician who's confident on the outside might be kind of a worse on the inside. You could also say incompetent, but we'll call it a worse. Uh, of course, I believe there are examples for these inside the book. Uh, I know there is for concept, but you don't really have to go through it. Um, they don't impact your stats. You can just make up whatever you want. Of course, you can pick a name and, of course, put your player name in uh, here as you go along, whenever you want, or completely after you uh, finish the character. Uh, for the record, these character sheets can be found in the links that I'm putting down in the, com uh, the comments down below. Uh, I should have probably mentioned that at the start, but hey, there you go. Now, the next thing up is the attributes. These stats have a large impact on your character's actual performance inside the game, 
more so than talents, skills, and knowledges do, because as you can see, there are nine attributes over here, and there's quite a ton of skills, knowledges, and talents, plus you can make up your own. In the uh, non-core books, I'm, I'm sure there's actually a lot more. I haven't really read them, but... Uh, and that's why you, you get less points to spend on attributes than you do on abilities. Now, if you don't know already, whenever you're making a skill check inside of the game, you almost always do it by... Uh, your storyteller will ask you to make a check, and they will say, combine a attribute like strength with a skill, a talent, or a knowledge, possibly melee. Like if you're trying to swing a melee weapon, I think it's actually dexterity and melee to hit, and then your strength plays an impact on the damage. Um, but yeah, basically, all rolls are going to be a combination of these two, and the dice pool that you have in total uh, generally, at least the base dice pool, is going to be equal to the number of dots you put in each of the two. So if you had three in melee and three in dexterity, that would be a base six dice to try to roll successes in order to hit. But I'm not going to try to cover the rules in depth here. This is just for making a character. So uh, for stats, you can see at the bottom of this character sheet, seven, five, and three, that means you get three different pools to distribute among your attributes. Uh, you can pick any category you want to have the 7, any to have the 5, and any to have the 3. Since this is a Tremere, Tremere are basically blood mages. They're very intelligent and they highly guard their secrets. So this is the kind of character who needs to be very intelligent. So we'll go ahead and make this the 7 point category, immediately putting 3 into intelligence. If we put 2 more over here into perception, then that makes a total of 5 points we've spent. The first one of course is free to all characters, you can't go below uh, 1. Um, so let's see, five, let's put one more in intelligence to Max's intelligence, a super brilliant character, and a little bit of voice, because that never hurts. Um, I feel like making the second category social, um, a politician should have some charisma, and some ability to manipulate people. So that's three points right there, and we'll put one more in manipulation, and then one in appearance as well. So a fairly charismatic person. Uh, well above the average for any human, and uh, looks all right as well. So then we have three points to spend on physical, we'll just put one point in each, which uh, effectively makes it fairly average, nothing too special there. Now we move on to skills, talents, and knowledges, which I believe is 13, 9, and I was going to say 5, but 13, 9, and 5. I meant 7, 7 for the last category. Okay, so 13 points, we'll put that in Knowledges, 9 we'll put in Skills, and 5 we'll put in Talents. So, uh, Knowledges, Politics, that should obviously be maxed. If this is a skilled politician, then he should be a political genius. Very good at manipulating people, and uh, charismatic, really knows his way around politics. Probably should also have a base knowledge of law, although I'm sure he has uh, lawyers to assist him. Eh, I mean... You could argue it could be higher, because a lot of politicians are lawyers, but eh, whatever. So he spent seven points. That would mean six left. So medicine, nah. A little bit of a cult. Science, sure. And uh, computer skills, those are pretty important. A little bit of academics. Okay, if we put two... No, no, no. We should have one in finance as well. Okay, so that makes 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, great. Knowledge is done. Now for skills. Uh, ability to drive a car. I'll share one point. Now you don't actually need to have drive as a skill in order to drive a car. That's mostly a skill for doing stunts that are a little bit out of the ordinary. If you're pressured or if you're driving under dangerous conditions, then that might be when you need to use drive as a skill. Etiquette. Oh yes, you definitely need that as a politician. Okay, so that's four points, and uh, five more to go. Firearms, sure, a little bit of that. Performance, sure. Uh, stealth, a little bit. Um, we'll put one more point into etiquette, even. And eh, every vampire's got to defend himself in melee from one time to another. So, one, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just to double check. Yep, nine down there. Okay, that was a little bit strange. Anyway. So we have our nine points down here in skills, and we have to put five in talents. So we can pick from down here, alertness versus awareness. I believe alertness is more of your physical senses, 
And awareness is more of your social conversation awareness, like if you can pick up on things that are a little bit confusing. Uh, I could actually be wrong on that, though. Um, athletics? Nah. Brawl? No. A politician doesn't fight with his fists. That's a bit uncouth, I believe. Empathy? Wait, no. <laughs> Heck no. Intimidation and leadership, though? Eh, more on the intimidation side. Four. And... Um, we could put... One into Streetwise, I believe. Uh, knows a little bit about crime uh, organizations, gangs, and all that other stuff. So now we move down to Disciplines. Now, as I mentioned at the start of all this, depending on your clan, you have access to different starting disciplines, though later on, as your character gains experience, you can branch out into non-standard disciplines that your clan doesn't normally practice in, but you as a character can. So, for the Tremere clan, your three starting disciplines are Aspects, Dominate, and uh, Thaumaturgy. Now, uh, you can choose any number of points in these, up to three, of course, which, as you put more points in, your powers get stronger in that category, and you'll have to actually go look up in the books or online resources exactly what each of those powers are and what they do. Um, as they are powerful, you're going to want to probably use each of them inside the game um, in order to really play your character to the fullest. So, uh, we'll just actually go ahead and put one point in each of them. Okay, Dominate. And... Thaumaturgy. I spelled something like that. So go ahead and put one point in each of those. Uh, that means we have access to the base level powers of each of those three disciplines, which isn't a bad way to go. It kind of makes you a little bit jack-of-all-trades. Um, in some circumstances, that's good. In some, it might not be ideal. Uh, just probably you want to actually play uh, most in line with who your character is. Um, at least that's how I would do it, because I like to play in character a little bit more. But if you're the kind of person who really likes to power game and make your character a total badass, then by all means, uh, look through the book and figure out which of the disciplines are actually best for winning, quote-unquote. Okay, and we get five points in backgrounds. Now, when it comes to backgrounds, these are mostly kind of describing where your character came from, but they do actually have in-game benefits. So, if you click down on the drop-down list, you can see all of them right now. Um, all of these, I believe, you can have uh, under any circumstances, except for Black Hand member. For that, you have to actually be a member of the Sabbat sect first. Uh, the sex, I didn't really touch on it. But as if, a, if the clan is your character's vampire race, then the sect is more like your political party. There's the Camarillas, the Sabbat, the Anarchs, and uh, there may have actually been one or two more there, but the Sabbat, uh, just to quickly go over it, are very pack-like, kind of vicious, often violent, uh, considered to be, for the most part, sort of mindless. Um, and the Black Hand are, of course, very violent, very merciless, but having the Black Hand as a membership does actually get you benefits if you choose to go down that path. Um, now there are other ones that I think might make a little bit more sense to this character, uh, such as Contacts for one, a politician needs to know people, and uh, Influence, as well as Resources, I think. Uh, you're gonna have money, you wanna have influence, and you wanna have some contacts, so we'll go ahead and choose those three and distribute the uh, five background points accordingly. Okay, so one in contacts, one in resources, and we'll put two there and two there. And then we move on to virtues. Uh, these would have to do with your character's morality, especially when it comes to holding in the beast. Uh, all vampires struggle with having the uh, thoughts of going into a feeding frenzy. Uh, especially if your vampire gets very hungry, obviously the sight of blood is kind of a churn-on for their hunger trigger, so to speak. And the higher these are, the more human-like your character uh, really is in certain aspects. So, a courageous vampire, would you actually be able to stand up in the face of possibly dying, or would you run away like a rabid animal? Uh, same with self-control. Um, Will you basically uh, 
turn into instinct and if your character was to be put in a dangerous situation would he kind of freak out and go into a frenzy or would you actually have the uh, mental discipline the self-control in order to avoid that and conscious and conviction um, more dealing with the morality side of things does your character uh, actually take morality into consideration when he's doing his a uh, choosing his actions or is he kind of a selfish deck who um, wouldn't think twice about murdering basically anyone that would supposedly be close to him? So for virtues, I believe you get seven points. Yeah, seven points, you can distribute them effectively. And they will affect your humanity and path as well as your willpower down here. So uh, let's go ahead and put them in. Politician may not have too much of a conscious, uh, but, you know, may have a little bit. Who knows? Uh, we'll put some points into courage. Just uh, just one, one into each of those. And self control. Uh, a politician definitely going to have a lot of self control, so we'll max that. So we do still have one point left over, so we'll go ahead and drop that into courage. Now, as I mentioned earlier, down for humanity and path. These starting scores are actually based off of the scores that you picked up here. So your willpower is equal to your courage at its base. And then your humanity slash path is equal to your conscience plus your self-control. So that's uh, seven for humanity. Now, uh, the base path is humanity, which is where your character is on the path of struggling with containing the beast within and uh, maintaining their human-like demeanor. Well, nature, really. Um, there are also other paths that you can go on if your character is really trying to be something different instead of just trying to be human-like, uh, but has other goals or aspirations. You can look you can look those up if you want, uh, but humanity is actually just fine for most characters, and it fits very well with the base theme of Vampire the Masquerade. Now, uh, you do still have 15 remaining freebie points. You can see that it says 7, 5, 2, and 1. That refers to how many points it actually costs to uh, boost up these other stats over here. Now, you don't have to spend the freebie points on stat, uh, stats. There's also a section over here for merits and flaws. So you can take a merit, which is, if you've ever played something like D&D, it's kind of like a feat where your character has something special about them, which gives them a bonus to something very specific or some other kind of unique thing that only that character can do. That would cost freebie points, and you could put merits over here. Uh, flaws are the opposite of that, where they have something that cripples them, whether it's mentally, socially, or physically. And if you take a flaw, you actually get bonus freebie, uh, freebie points to spend on other areas. Now, if you wanted to make a really interesting character, you could go ahead and look through all the merits and flaws until you get something just right to your character. And I think there's also a limit on how many flaws you can take. But we're just going to make it simple and spend the 15 freebie points on our stats, skills, and advantages. So for a attribute, it costs 5 to put another point into one of these things. Abilities, it's 2 points per, bo uh, per little circle. Disciplines are seven, and that's because a point in discipline is a huge deal. Um, you get a lot more powerful when you go from one to two to three to four in any of these disciplines. And, and then I believe... Um, and then I believe for backgrounds, it's one point per uh, actual box in here. They do get you some in-game benefits, but not so much directly on your character, more about the power he wields within the world, who your contacts are, of course, you know, if you want to call on some Black Hand members, etc., uh, that kind of stuff. Also, generation is actually a pretty big deal. That might be one of the ones that more directly affect your character's power, uh, because if you start from a higher generation, you get more blood points, and you can spend more blood points per turn, I don't know if you can actually boost your generation high enough that you can do that. Um, but that is one option to look at. So, oh, by the way, your base generation, that is 13, which gets you 10 blood points as your maximum, and one per turn. 
and we're going to make it 13th generation characters, so we'll go ahead and fill that in now. Uh, blood, of course, is kind of like your magic points if you've played another RPG. Um, using special abilities like Thaumaturgy Magic might cost blood points. And the only way you can get blood points back is by sucking blood from animals or humans in order to restore it. And you also lose one per day. If you have a blood pool that's too low, you'll go into a berserk feeding frenzy. But anyway, to continue, virtues cost two points per uh, thing, and then of course merits are varying. So let's go back up here to the stats. Do I want to boost any stats with the 15 freebie points? I think that those stats are actually quite acceptable as they are. Um, maybe another point in leadership, so that's going to cost two. So 13 freebie points remaining. Let's boost Thaumaturgy up one, because Blood Magic is pretty sweet. But that does cost seven points, so now we have six points left. Uh, his Virtues, that's quite fine as it is. Uh, context, we do need more context and influence. And resources, so that takes uh, four points right there. And we can finish it off. Let's say by having a herd. Now, a herd would be basically, if you have points in herd, the idea is that there are humans that you can easily feed on that are readily accessible to your, her your character. Um, the more points in herd you have, the bigger that group of humans is. And it gives you a bonus to hunting humans for uh, blood collection. It's not bad to have at all. And I believe that makes 15 points, so our character is actually done. Uh, of course, this doesn't describe all the rules of the game. Uh, you'll have to go through them and read a bit of them uh, yourself. Uh, remember that sooner or later you do want to pick your name, uh, obviously about your player name here, and uh, you probably need to consult your storyteller for this, but your sire, the vampire who created you, made you from a human into a vampire. Good stuff to know. Uh, beyond this base character sheet, of course, if you want to get heavier into the roleplay, uh, you can create a full-fledged backstory with uh, text, or you could you know, go into Microsoft Word, make a four-page essay on it. Um, however deep you want to get with the game. Um, but just having this probably gives you a pretty good idea of who your character is. I mean, we clearly know who this guy is. He's kind of a scumbag politician. Not much morals, but he is charismatic, he's intelligent, he's manipulative. Uh, he doesn't really do much fighting on his own, but he's a pretty smooth talker. And he knows his uh, way in politics. And as a result, he's also got plenty of contacts, influence, and resources. And he's uh, truly a Tremere, uh, really maximizing that thaumaturgy blood magic. Well, not maximizing it, but two points in it is pretty powerful. And of course, on the path of humanity, trying to keep that beast within himself, generation 13, which means that his blood is actually further descended from the original vampire, of course, that is Cain in the vampire universe. And um, as such, doesn't have a crazy amount of blood power that he can spend on every turn, but that's also for the sake of balance. The vampires who really can do that are typically elders or the supposed antediluvians, which may or may not exist with inside the world, but are rumored to still be around. Of course, those would be third generation vampires, which would be insanely powerful if you did run into one. Uh, so yeah, that basically gives you a good idea of how to make your character. Um, I would keep in mind the rulebook. The more you actually read through, the better it will be. Uh, but this should get you started. So I've been Dark Skeleton. Thank you guys for sticking around and making this crazy politician character with me. And I will see you all next time.